Greetings, motherfuckers, or should I say, Shedite, and welcome to this week's edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, and today, well, I hope you've got your bags packed full of plates as we're heading to the land of gods and democracy. I love democracy. Because when it comes to this week's video, Greece is the word. Hold on to your hair, Travolta. But what do Greeks do 164 times a year that's enough to make a tomato blush? What words do we owe thanks to Greece for, for giving us an English? And will I mention Jennifer Lawrence again for the first time in months in this video? Will I? Will I? In a way, I already have. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So, get ready for a Mediterranean feast of factual delicacy as we cruise through 101 facts about Greece. Number one. Greece is a country found in Southeast Europe and is made up of anything up to 6,000 islands, depending on how you define an island. 227 of them are inhabited and of course the mainland of Greece which borders Albania, North Macedonia, Bulgaria and Turkey. Oh, and the Aegean Sea, the Ionian Sea, the Cretan Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Number 2. Consisting of the mainland and many, many islands means that Greece is made up of nine different geographic regions, Macedonia, Central Greece, the Peloponnese, Thessaly, Epirus, the Aegean Islands, Thrace, Crete and the Ionian Islands. Number 3. 80% of Greece is made up of mountains, with Mount Olympus being the tallest at around 9,573 feet, or basically around 1,574 of me stacked on top of each other, or 1,665 Jennifer Lawrences. Now there's a party, but tall basically. Number 4. The motto of Greece is Eleftheria Ithanatos, which translated means freedom or death. It arose during the Greek War of Independence in the 1820s, where soldiers used the phrase as a war cry as they fought against the Ottoman Empire. From there it was adopted as the country's official motto. Number 5. Greece isn't actually called Greece, I know. Its real official name is the Hellenic Republic, or Hellas. <laughs> These names are more often used in Greece itself, and Greek citizens are more likely to refer to themselves as Hellenese as opposed to Greek. Always good for a pub quiz, that one. Number 6. The name for Greece comes from Grecia, the Latin translation of the Hellenic Republic, and literally means Land of the Greeks. Kind of like the English translation of Germany is, well, Germany, but Germany called themselves Deutschland. Number 7. The name Hellas refers to the ancient Greek story of Helen, who became the founding father of all Greek tribes after Zeus tried to wipe out humanity with a flood. Helen's descendants, Aeolus, Dorus, Ion and Arceus, became the namesakes of the four Greek tribes following this. Oh, and the time that followed was called the Hellenistic period. Have I said Helen enough yet? Number 8, Helen. Anyway, for more mythology, check out our 101 facts all about that, but after this one obviously, because now we're going to fast forward a bit through this abridged history here. After the ancient Greeks, the Romans took over and formed Roman Greece. Then the Western Roman Empire collapsed, and the Eastern Empire with Greece formed the Byzantine Empire. Number 9. So along with the Byzantine Empire, which lasted around 900 years, give or take, Christianity was introduced, and polytheism that we know from ancient Greek mythology pretty much died out. Number 10. It's all a bit blurry, and our writer has had her brain melted by the extensiveness of Greek Middle Age history, but at some point in that Greek Middle Age, between the 4th and 13th centuries, the Greek Orthodox Church became the main religion in Greece, and remains that way to the modern day. Number 11. Then the Ottoman Empire came along in the 1400s and ended the Eastern Roman Empire and Byzantine era at the fall of Constantinople. During the rise of the Ottomans, they took over the majority of mainland Greece and most of the Greek islands. The Venetians held the rest, most notably the Ionian islands, except for Cephalonia, and some of the port cities. Number 12 -er. The Venetian-owned Ionian islands was where the modern Greek statehood began, and where the creation of the Republic of the Seven Islands began in 1800. Number 13. So yeah, we're going to jump forward now to 1800, when the French Revolutionary Wars brought about the beginning of the First Hellenic Republic in 1821. The Greeks declared their independence from the various empires that controlled them in 1822, however, this wasn't achieved until seven years later in 1829. Number 14. During this Greek War of Independence, the Ottomans, aided by the Egyptians, were winning. Easily. However, in 1826, the British, French and Russians decided they agreed with Greek independence and sailed over to Navarino, which by the way is now known as Pylos. Number 15. The Ottomans refused to accept the European mediation and so the European naval fleets obliterated the Egyptian fleet. Boom. After that, the Ottomans were a bit more open to mediation. And so to cut a very long story short that includes loads of confusing politics, the Treaty of Constantinople was signed and Greece became an independent state. Number 16. 
Over the course of the following century, Greece expanded into more territories, particularly their previously owned islands like Crete and the Ionians. This was primarily achieved during the Balkan Wars of 1912 and 13. Number 17. World War I saw Greece hit another stumble, with the Greek King Constantine I wanting to remain neutral as he was fond of Germany, while the Greek Prime Minister wanted to join the Allied forces. Whoa. Uh -oh. Eventually, in 1917, the Allies forced the King to abdicate to his more agreeable son. Number 18. Post WW1, that's World War I for short, although I've just negated that by explaining what it means, it was agreed that the Ottoman city of Smyrna would become part of the Greek state due to its large Greek population. Here's the thing though, the Turkish nationalists really didn't like that, and so the Greco-Turkish War began in 1919. Number 19. The Turkish took back Smyrna and basically burned it to the ground, causing the end of the war and the Treaty of Lausanne. The treaty recognised Turkey as another independent republic and a population exchange took place where Orthodox Christians were sent to Greece and Muslims were sent to what was now Turkey. Estimates say that between 750 to 900,000 Greeks were killed by the Turks between 1914 and 1923. Number 20. Right, let's move on to something more cheerful. Oh, World War II. Oh dear. Greece had another pretty shocking time here too. New Prime Minister Metaxas established the Metaxas Regime, a totalitarian government which took inspiration from fascist Italy, although somehow still managed to remain part of the Allies. Number 21. Skipping forward a couple of years, Adolf Hitler decided he wanted to invade Greece to strengthen his southern power, and so the German invasion of Greece started in 1941. Axis troops from Germany, Bulgaria and Italy invaded from the north, and many of the Greek population fled to Crete and Egypt for safety. Of course, the country and economy were devastated by the effects of the German occupation. Number 22, oh, oh, oh. Jumping forward again, the Axis forces withdrew from Greece in 1944 to focus on Yugoslavia and Albania to the north. The British, alongside resistance fighters, reclaimed control of Athens and then the rest of the country. Number 23. Nope, not finished yet by the way, 1944 then saw the beginning of the Greek Civil War, which also happens to be the first major confrontation of the Cold War. The huge opposition between the political parties in Greece caused a five-year war which ended with the country joining NATO and becoming allies with the USA. Number 24. In 1967, the Greek military decided to seize power and become a dictatorship, and set in motion the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 1974. Whilst the military regime ended and democracy was restored in Greece, the tensions in Cyprus still remain today. Number 25. So the Third Hellenic Republic was born in 1974 and Greece rejoined NATO in 1980 and the EU in 1981. Of course it hasn't been plain sailing since then, with the 2008 global recession causing a huge debt crisis in Greece, which continues to affect the country today. Number 26. Right, let's move on to some cheerier stuff, eh? Because of its Mediterranean location, Greece is one of the sunniest countries in the entire world. The Greeks see around 250 days of sun every year on average, with some of the more southern islands averaging closer to 300 days a year. So if you're pale like me, pack the sun cream for your Grecian adventures. Number 27. Greece is around 51,000 square miles in area, which makes it roughly the size of Alabama. This makes it the 92nd largest country in the world, just in front of North Korea and behind Tajikistan. Facts. Number 28. The population of Greece, however, is 10.7 million people, around double that of the aforementioned Alabama, and less than half of North Korea's population. This is the most fact-fueled way of saying that it's not super populated, but it's not exactly sparse either. Number 29. Outside of Greece, the city with the largest population of Greek people is Melbourne. Didn't expect that, did you? Not only that, but the city has the sixth largest Greek population of any city in the world. It's a bit further away than the other Greek cities, though. Number 30. 98% of those 10 million people are ethnic Greeks, so basically everyone. The other 2% are mostly people from the surrounding countries like Albania, Armenia, Bulgaria and the former Yugoslavic Republic of Macedonia. Number 31. Somewhat unsurprisingly, a vast majority of people that live in Greece reside in its capital city of Athens. Athens also happens to be one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, being constantly lived in for more than 7,000 years. Boom. Double fact. Number 32. To be fair, Athens is pretty cool. It's not only the birthplace of democracy itself, which we should be thankful for, it's also where so much of Western culture began. It birthed many significant figures in history. Herodotus the historian, Socrates the philosopher, and Hippocrates the physician, who the Hippocratic Oath is literally named after. Greeks are cool guys. Number 33. There are also a total of 148 theatrical stages in Athens, more than London's West End and New York's Broadway. The Dionysus Eleutherius Theatre is the oldest of these, built all the way back in the 6th century BC. Number 34. 
Greece also has more archaeological museums than any other country in the entire world, which isn't surprising given its incredibly long documented history of the country and its influence on Western civilization as we know it. Number 35. The Acropolis in Athens almost became one of the new seven wonders of the world because of its rich history. Today, the Acropolis stands as a symbol of democracy, despite its extensive damage caused by countless wars and invasions we talked about earlier. Number 36. Speaking of historical sites, there's a rule in Greece that states that you are not allowed to wear any shoes that could potentially damage the protected historic sites often visited by tourists. So in case you were considering wearing high-heeled shoes to hike up the Acropolis, then remember the pressure under your feet is greater than that of an elephant, so put some damn sneakers on. Number 37. Of course, the most iconic part of the Acropolis is the Parthenon. Built over 2,500 years ago, the site now famous for its white marble sculptures was once actually incredibly colourful, as it was all beautifully painted. It's now sadly faded into history. Oh, how poetic. Might call my first album that. Number 38. Athens is named after the Greek goddess Athena, and according to myth, Athena and Poseidon fought to have a city named after them. By presenting the citizens with gifts, Athena and her olive tree won. Lame. Number 39. Not only is Greece famous for its archaeology and ancient history, but back around 500 BC, the ancient Greeks were pioneers in waste management. Yep, the Grecians started the first ever garbage dump, or rubbish tip if you're British like me, all those years ago in an effort to try and keep their streets as clean as possible. And yet over 2,000 years later, people still can't sort their trash into whites and colours. Amateurs. Number 40. According to the Visit Greece website, there's around 6,000 Greek islands, of which only 227 are inhabited, but of course, that depends on your definition of an island. Because personally, a two-foot mound of sand in the middle of the sea isn't really an island to me, but hey, that's just my perspective. Number 41. The largest of these islands is popular holiday destination Crete. Other popular islands include Santorini, Mykonos, Rhodes, Corfu, and Zante. Mykonos actually has its own mascot. He's a cute little pelican named Petros. The meaning of life. Speaking of Crete, the saying taking the bull by its horns comes from the Greek myth of Hercules saving Crete from a bull by seizing its horns. Number 43. The Greek island Vicaria is one of the five blue zones in the world. People from here often live well into their 90s and suffer with less physical ailments compared to the rest of the world. This is attributed to their healthier diet, active lifestyles, and a more relaxed style of life. Are they accepting new arrivals? Actually, I can't get on board with a healthier diet. Number 44. Greece has around 9,000 miles of coastline because of all the islands. In fact, no point in Greece is more than 85 miles, or 137 kilometers, from water. Number 45. Back in the beginning of time somewhere, Greece was actually completely underwater. It pretty much sits on the Aegean Sea tectonic plate, which is surrounded by the Anatolia Plate, as well as the Eurasia Plate and the Africa Plate. When these collided way back when, it forced the land upwards, creating Greece. Number 46. This also helps explain why Greece is pretty mountainous, but it also explains the near-constant seismic activity throughout Greece and the Greek islands. Oh, and all of the volcanoes. Number 47. One of the most iconic parts of Greek landscape, as well as the mountains, is the turquoise blue of many roofs and windows in the Cyclade Islands. This shade, called Kyanos, is believed to keep evil away. Interestingly, it's also where the words cyan and cyanide come from. Number 48. The white of the buildings, however, is said to come from the cholera outbreak in 1938. Back then, the white paint contained limestone, which, unknown to them at the time, had antibacterial properties which stopped the spread of the disease. Number 49. There was also a law passed in 1974 that all houses on Greek islands be painted blue and white to honour the recently deceased dictator Metaxas, as the colours were a symbol of patriotism and, of course, that supported the political agenda in Greece at the time. Number 50. Athenian democracy dates all the way back to the 5th century BC. Yep, the ancient Greeks invented the system of governance that we all know today. Well, I say we all know. Citizens with voting rights were allowed to vote on various legislations and bills. As is a common occurrence in the olden days, that only included adult male citizens, so no women, no foreigners, and no slaves were allowed to cast their own ballots. Number 51. Nowadays, that's thankfully changed. In fact, it's the law that any citizen over the age of 18 must vote when required. This means that unlike in the UK or US, you don't have to register to vote. It's done automatically the year you turn 18. That being said, there's no longer much enforcement on the law, so I guess if you really didn't want to vote, you could skip it, but you really should just do it. Number 52. Of course, Greece is the creator of the Olympic Games. It's named after Mount Olympus, where the ancient Greek gods called home, but because the games honoured Zeus and the other polytheistic gods, they were considered unchristian and were outlawed by the Romans. Number 53. 
The first ever Olympic Games in 776 BC were actually won by a Greek cook named Karobus, who won in the sprint. These ancient games were said to have included running events, a pentathlon, boxing, wrestling, equestrian event, and the ancient Greek sport of pancration. Number 54. After the extensive ban of the Unchristian Games, they returned in 1896, once again in Athens. However, the modern Olympics would take place in cities across the world instead of just Athens like its ancient predecessors. Number 55. Speaking of ancient Greek sport, the word marathon comes from Greece. A runner named Pheidippides ran 150 miles to seek help from the Spartans to fight the Persians. After their victory, he ran 25 miles back to Athens from Marathon to tell everyone. And that's where the name and length of the long distance event comes from. Number 56. The flag of Greece is made up of nine blue and white stripes, said to represent the nine syllables of the Greek motto, Eleftheria e Thanatos, while the colours of blue and white represent the seas and the sky. The cross in the upper left-hand corner symbolises the cross of Greek orthodoxy. Number 57. Greece has the longest national anthem in the world, with 158 verses, yes, really. It's called the Hymn to Liberty or Hymn to Freedom, and while it has that many verses, they don't tend to get sung very often. It's also the anthem of the Republic of Cyprus, written by Dionysos Solomos in 1823, becoming the anthem in 1865. Number 58. The Greek language is one of the oldest languages in the world, having been spoken since at least 1450 BC. It's also responsible for more than 150,000 words in the English language, like economy, academy, and school. Obviously, I'm not going to list them all. There's more than 150,000. I mean, I'd say I'd have better things to do, but I can't leave my house, so that's a lie. I'm just not doing it. Number 59. One I will tell you about, though, is the word alphabet. It takes its name from the first two letters of the Greek alphabet, alpha and beta. They do say that if you say any word, the root of that word is always Greek. Number 60. Greece is supposedly the most active nation, romance-wise, shall we say, in the world, according to leading prophylactic companies. Reports say they get it on 164 days of the year. Number 61. Interestingly, Greece also has a very low divorce rate. I'm not saying that this fact and the previous one are linked, but that could be why. Number 62. Speaking of physical activities, Greece has more than 4,000 traditional dances. Some say 10,000, but other, more reputable sources that aren't Wikipedia say around 4,000. Of course, the much stereotyped dance we all think of is the Sataki dance, which gained infamy in the 1964 film Zorba the Greek. Number 63. I'm not going to name all the dances, our editors might murder me while trying to find non-copyright footage of them, but a couple of notable ones are the Hasapiko and the Kalamatianos. Traditional Greek dancing has been used to bring communities together throughout history. Nintendo 64. One of the stereotypes often associated with Greeks is plate smashing. It's almost obsolete in modern Greece, with places that do it being mostly for tourists, but it is documented in its history. It suggested that smashing plates symbolise new beginnings by throwing away the past, and it also kept away evil spirits by tricking them into thinking people were angry or upset as opposed to celebrating. Number 65. Another tradition that's said to keep away evil spirits is spitting, or at the least the noise of spitting, three times. It's often done at weddings and to children to protect them from harm and the evil spirits, and to wish good luck. Number 66. Speaking of evil spirits, if you go to Greece, you're sure to see some evil eyes. And I'm not talking about Sauron. Also called Nazar Charms, the blue eyes are to ward off the devil and his gaze, which is said to cause misfortune or injury. People hang or display these eyes to protect themselves and their homes. Number 67. If you do visit Greece, however, you probably shouldn't wave at anyone. Waving with the palm open, as is normal in Western culture, is actually an insult in Greece. This gesture is called a mouncer, and is often used as a sign of anger and shame, seen prominently at demonstrations and protests in Greece. Number 68. On a lighter note, whilst in Greece you'll likely be invited to sample the national drink, ouzo. Similarly to Western custom, they say cheers to each other before they drink it. In Greek, by the way, it's stin igiamas. You might even hear an oppa. Number 69. Uh, smash those plates 174 times a year. It's one of the most typical words people think about when they think of the Greek language, but oppa is often used for a number of different purposes. It's primarily an interjection, but it's used to show disbelief, disapproval, or an expression of excitement or joy. So basically, you can use it for pretty much anything. Number 70. In addition to ouzo, the Greeks are renowned for their winemaking, which has been a tradition in Greece for more than 4,000 years. There are over 600 wineries in Greece, and for centuries, Greek wine was prestigious, being exported for high prices outside of the Mediterranean. Number 71. Greece is of course known for its incredible food. In addition to olives, which they are the leading exporters of, they're known for their feta cheese and other dishes and dips, like taramasalata, tzatziki, moussaka, and gyros. Oh, and of course, baklava. 
In fact, Greek and other Mediterranean foods are considered some of the healthiest in the world. Number 72. Dairy has always held a special place in Greek hearts, ever since the olden days. Milk was considered a sacred food by the ancient Greeks, and according to mythology, it was Aristeus, the son of the god Apollo, who taught them how to make cheese. Which makes him the god that's given humanity the best contribution from the gods, frankly. Cheese is divine, especially when it's melted and pumped into pizza crust, just like the gods intended. Number 73. While we're on the topic of gods, the most important holiday in the Greek Orthodox Church is not Christmas, but Easter. The whole country remembers the death of Christ, I mean not literally because they weren't there, but after the solemnity comes a huge celebration on Easter Sunday. Number 74. One Greek island in particular really likes to celebrate. On Chios, two rival churches engage in something called Riketopolemos, which translates as Rocket War. This Easter tradition pits two rival churches, St. Mark's and Penegius Erathene, that are 400 metres apart in a firework spectacular that would put Alton Towers to shame. Number 75. The Rocket War involves each church pelting each other with a load of rockets with the aim of hitting the opposing bell tower. That sounds incredibly dangerous. Ahead of the annual event, locals have to board up their houses and cover their property in metal sheets to prevent damage. Number 76. The origins of Riketopolemos are unclear, but it started in the Ottoman era. However, back in the day, it was supposed to be fought with actual cannons, something which the Ottomans apparently found a bit excessive when they banned the use of them in 1889. Number 77. Mount Athos is, well, a mountain. It's also a peninsula jutting out of northeastern Greece. Sure, the mountain only has an elevation of 2,033 metres, almost 4.5 times smaller than Everest, but hey, that's not why we're here. Number 78. The area is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that plays home to 20 monasteries, which in turn house some 2,000 monks of the Eastern Orthodox Church. But here's a twist, women are not allowed to visit. It's thought to be the biggest area in the world, at 130 square miles, from which women are entirely banned. Number 79. The somewhat silly ban on women is so extensive that even female animals aren't allowed in. The restriction has been in place for more than 1,000 years and means women can't come within 500 metres of the coast. Number 80. Now I know what you're thinking, how can they practically ban female animals? They don't really. A bunch of standard farm animals aren't allowed in, which means cheese and eggs have to be imported to the island. Number 81. In 1953, a woman disguised as a man, Mulan style, managed to spend three days in the area, and it did not go down well. It led to a law, which means any woman entering would get 12 months jail time. Mount Athos even has special status in EU treaties regarding the movement of people. Number 82. Good old Saint Nick, he of Santa Claus fame, was Greek. The big man was born in 270 in Patara in Lycia, which is now modern day Turkey. He earned his rep as a gift giver via secret kindly acts, putting coins in the shoes of those who'd left them out for him. His death on the 6th of December 343 is celebrated today with the feast day of St. Nicholas. Number 83. Greeks bring in the new year with a slice of Vasila pita cake, made with almonds and lemon juice. If you chow down and happen upon a coin, it's good luck for the rest of the year. Number 84. We're used to Friday the 13th being unlucky, but over in Greece, and Spanish-speaking countries actually, it's Tuesday the 13th that's supposed to be bad news. The fall of Constantinople in 1204 happened on Tuesday the 13th, and as the name for Tuesday's treaty or third, and bad luck comes in threes, the case is pretty much comprehensive. Number 85. There is just one crematorium in the whole of Greece, and that opened in 2019. Prior to that, the nearest facility was in Bulgaria. In the Greek Orthodox Church, cremation is forbidden and the dead are buried instead, hence their opposition to burning them up. Number 86. All male Greek citizens are required to serve in the military at some point between the ages of 19 and bring for the Vashon on the 45. If you choose the army, your service will last for nine months, but those who opt for the navy or air force, you're looking at an entire year. Although the government is planning to make it 12 months all round in 2021. Number 87. Conscripts aren't actually paid. Depending on your circumstances, you can get financial aid of up to 600 euro per month, but it can be as low as nine. You do get food, accommodation, and unlimited public transport though, so. Number 88. For those that make it to 35 without doing their stint, you can splash the cash and avoid doing the proper stint in the armed service. In return for 45 days, basic training, and 8,505 euro, you're good to go. Alternatively, for any conscientious objectors, civilian service is an option, but is longer than military service at 15 months. Number 89. Sticking with the military, Greece spends around 2.6% of its GDP on NATO, well above the 2% target asked of NATO members, which Greece has been a member of since 1952. Number 90. 
Joining Greece in NATO back in 1952 was its next-door neighbour Turkey, making them allies but not best friends. Over the years the two countries have had a number of disputes, notably over Cyprus. In 1996 they almost went to war over a couple of inhabited islands in the Aegean Sea. Number 91. However, relations between the two nations improved just a few years later. In August of 1999, Turkey was hit by a devastating earthquake and a month later, Greece similarly fell victim to another one. The tragedy brought the two countries together as they helped each other recover from the disaster in what became known as earthquake diplomacy. Number 92. Greece is in the European Union, having joined in 1981. It adopted the euro as its official currency between 2001 and 2002, replacing the drachma. Number 93. Since 2012, Greece has been the worst performing economy in the EU, having declined by 0.64% between 2012 and 2019. However, its GDP has been growing since 2017 and in 2019 was ahead of nine other EU countries including Italy, Germany, France and the UK, we were part of them back then, in terms of annual growth. Number 94. That said, the past decade has been tough for the Greek economy, which was sparked by the credit crunch and led to the Greek government debt crisis, otherwise known as the crisis in Greece. Essentially, the government couldn't pay back the money it borrowed. The end result was that the economy shrank every year bar one between 2008 and 2016. The bar one was 2014 for economy nerds out there. I see you. Number 95. Part of the reason the government finances were in a mess was that tax evasion was considered a national sport, and that's according to officials. In 2012, this sport amounted to an estimated 30 billion euros a year in uncollected DOSH. Between 1999 and 2010, it was estimated that one in four euros eligible for taxation was not declared to the authorities. Number 96. Okay, enough with the doom and gloom because Greece is still absolutely smashing it when it comes to sponges. You heard. Not to get to Kazakhstan as number one exporter of potassium on you, but Greece is the world's largest producer of sea sponges. Number 97. They're also hashtag blessed with an abundance of olives and Greece has more varieties than any other country on earth. So it's no surprise they like to smush them up and turn them into oil and money. Greece produces 346,000 tonnes of olive oil per year behind only Spain and Italy inside the EU. Number 98. However, when it comes to olive oil consumption, the Greeks will not be stopped. On average, a person in Greece gets through 24 litres of the stuff every day- no, sorry, not every day- every year, by far the most out of any country on earth. Number 99. Another well-known Greek delicacy that gets exported all over the world is feta cheese, which is made from sheep's milk but can sometimes contain goat's milk too. It's dubbed white gold, and given that feta exports increased by 85% between 2007 and 2014, you can see why. It's worth 260 million euros in foreign sales alone. <laughs> Number 100 rare, duh. Alexander of Greece, not that one, but the king who reigned from 1917 to 1920 met an unusual end. One day, while taking a walk, a Barbary macaque monkey belonging to palace staff attacked his German shepherd. The king bravely stepped in, but got bitten and his leg got infected. Number 101. Mm -hmm. None of the doctors would dare amputate said leg because, well, it's the king and taking his leg is kind of a big deal. In the end, Alexander died, which makes him, in all likelihood, the only king to be assassinated by a monkey. So that was 101 Facts About Greece. Have you ever been? Are you there now? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like when you're down there too. It really does help us out and, you know, I feel a nice little spring of my step every time you do. In the moon team though, there are- moon team? Meantime. In the meantime though, there are two videos on screen now that are really going to spring, spring your steps and make your days. And you're really going to enjoy them. So why not click on it, one of them, and, you know, see that I'm right and I'll see you there. It's been a long week. Goodbye.